I just had sex ultimate form. Let's do this shit. They're like, you want some donuts? Calm down, guys. Calm down. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. In a world. I'm not even gonna go into it. And it floats over like their nipples. Fucking Dan's gonna be on fire or some shit. And goes on and on and on and on. Don't stop believing. Alright, let's go. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. I'm your host, CJ. Here with me is our usual cast of co-hosts. We've got uh, Roberto. Hey. Dan. What's up? And Clocker. How's it going? All right, so, um, yeah, just because uh, I always do this, uh, every, whoever doesn't know what this is, it's a uh, podcast that works kind of like an anime or, or a book club for anime and manga where we recommend stuff, we watch it, read it, talk about it, you know, whatever. Um... I don't think it comes along with that. Huge spoiler warning for just anime and manga in general, because there are several things we're going to be talking about as topics, but we're also could just talk about random things like other shows and everything that we've watched and not say anything about those before we do, and it may spoil some endings or something. And um, the main things we're going to be talking about and spoiling heavily today are uh, the second half of Code Geass uh, Season 1. And Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, uh, Volume 6, which is chapters 36 through 41. Then after that, we're going to be talking about other anime and manga we've been watching and reading throughout the week. And then we're going to go on to our random topic of the day, which today is kind of just a general one, which uh, hopefully we'll get some fun stuff out of it. And it's uh, anime censorship and like some funny examples of it, what you think of it, how it can be improved, what have you. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get Dan here to... Um, Give us a quick little description of what Code Geass is so, uh, so we can start talking about it. Okay, I'm not as prepared for this today as I was the other time, but I'm going to try to do my best. It's uh, your favorite. You should Code be able to do something, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, it's it's kind of tough to describe it, though. But Code Geass is the story of this this guy called Lelouch who ha- gets this power on the, on the first episode where he can give any person one order and they'll be obligated to follow it. And then he tries to use this power to create a group called the Dark Knights or the Black Knights and uh, help free Japan from the hands of the evil empire of Britannia that has conquered it and, and got rid of like Japanese culture and rights and everything. So the story uh, of that we're going to be talking about today picks up right after uh, episode 12 when Shirley has just kissed Lelouch. Lelouch has just killed uh, Shirley's father uh, in one of his operations. And we start to see... A lot more aspects come in play into the show, such as a new uh, other characters that have a Gia's power like him. So, such as Mal, who is the guy who can read minds. That's the first arc that we, we see. And eventually a very interesting story arc with uh, Princess Euphemia. So, that, that's about it. Fucking hate this guy so much. More like, <laughs> more like Le Douche. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure that see, joke's probably made plenty of times. The thing about Lelouch is that, at least like in my case, I, I love to hate him. And I know exactly why you're feeling that way. Because, right, just just for the people who, who don't know, we're referring to the part where Lelouch accidentally starts losing control of his gears and tells Euphemia, who's the nicest princess that was about to get make everything right, like the, the anime could have ended right there and would have had like a super happy ending. But he kind of just tells her to kill all the Japanese. And then she gave, gives well, the order to go ahead. Well, what what essentially happened there? He, he she didn't he didn't just kind of tell her that he was giving her examples of things he could make her do. Essentially explaining his gears a little bit to her. Yeah, and saying, "Hey, I can make you do this, or I can make you kill all the Japanese." And it just because it's going in and out, and he loses control of it. When he says "kill yeah. all the Japanese," it happens, and it causes her to do that. Right? And, um, yeah. How did, you, did that shock you guys? How do you guys feel about that? I I was already too far gone at that point. Like. At, at this point in the anime, whenever that happened, I was like, yeah, whatever. He fucked up again. Cool. So, like, to be I, honest, I completely stopped caring at that point. <laughs> okay. To be honest, I kind of saw it coming. Um, really? Which is, yeah, I kind of saw it coming. Because throughout the entire anime, he's always had this ability to obviously, like, to, to just, hey, I'm going to force you to do this one thing. So right. when I saw him, like, start kind of beginning to lose his, like, control of his gear. So I was like, all right, here it goes. Some shit is going to happen because he's going to say yep. something he can't fucking take back, and shit's going to go down. And Yeah, there, there's a lot of build-up for that. And, so, and the, inter- 
the interesting thing about that is that we we see Lelouch fight you know Cornelia a lot, and, and at the end, uh, when 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 Euphemia comes into the game and and she finds out who he is because because he reveals himself to her in that uh, weird episode where they get stuck in an island or something, and she actually decides to in a way fight for his side or what she believes is his side, which is help the Japanese. So because she has the power of being the like the second governor or whatever uh, that she is, she decides to create this area dedicated to the Japanese people in Britannia. So in a way, she ruins Lelouch's plan. So she is the ultimate enemy that almost like by accident kind of ruins everything that Lelouch was planning because if she did that, like there will be no point to what he was doing anymore. He wouldn't be able to uh, use that excuse to gain yeah. the power that he wanted to gain anymore. So it's... It, it's funny when she reveals that because you you kind of expect okay so he might be happy about it and no he's like super angry oh, and being like I, fuck Euphemia. I never thought he would be happy with that. He he wasn't doing it to try to liberate Japan or anything. He was doing yeah. it to try to get himself power so he could crush Britannia. He didn't give a shit about the Japanese. He didn't give a shit about anyone. All he wanted to do was like fucking crush Britannia and literally like destroy the world so he can remake it or whatever. Well, like as soon right. as it said that, I was like, oh, that's just gonna piss him off more. He does care about his sister, though. Okay, above, his sister. Above anything the else. The one human being yeah. in the world he actually cares anything about. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing well, I want right, to... Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I mean, was just going to say, I, th I do think he cares for Shirley a little bit, too. But go ahead, you guys. Yeah. All right, Robert well, um, was going to say something. I was just going to say that, like, he's doing all of this for his sister, pretty yeah. much. See, the, the, the time I checked out, I really just stopped caring about the plot at that point and just most of the characters and everything was shortly after, like, where we left off last time. As soon as he, like, straight up... Because, like, I, I can understand a little bit of where he, he was coming from when he tried to, like, tried to help out Shirley and everything by, like, wiping parts of her memory out. But as soon as he did that, like, I kind of just checked out. I was like, all right, I'm fucking done with this. Like, I literally, I... Last week after we get done recording, I was like, all right, let's watch a little bit more. As soon as that happened, like, as soon as I realized that happened, I didn't even finish that episode. I was cut it off. I was like, yep, I'm done. I'm done. I just didn't watch it for like, a few days. Why you know like well why why did that make you so mad or or not like care anymore? Because because I feel like that made sense. Like that was the one solution he could have to that problem to fix that issue. No, there's a lot of other ways like to to kind of go about that and everything, and just taking away her memories of things she did and everything, and just part of her past and like part of her life and everything. He just straight up erased part of her life from her memory. Like, yeah, that's, that's not something you do to somebody. Even if it's something, like, it's it, it goes into the morality thing of, uh, what's a good, I, I've heard metaphors for it, but I can't remember one right now. It's kind of like the, um, the better the loved and lost and never loved at all or whatever. Like, all that stuff she did was because she cared about him so much and everything, and just so many things, like, it, yeah, it, it, it could fuck with her for the rest of her life and everything because of that. But she could end up actually have become a much stronger person because of that from getting through everything like that. And just completely, like, taking out not only just the fact that she, like, shot someone. But she didn't even fucking kill him. Um, just the fact that he took that out. If he would would have just done that, it'd be like, okay, you know, that's that's kind of fucked up, but whatever. Like, she still knows all this shit and she's going to try to get through it with him or whatever. But he just wiped out himself from her memory at all. Like, even some of the stuff with her dad and everything, I believe. Like, why she was sad about that and everything. like. That's not how you. That's not how you get someone to get over things. Just like taking it away cool. from them like that. And another thing, think... another ahead. thing for CJ's point is, you have better character development when you let the person actually fight through that kind of stuff. And yeah. what Lelouch did is pretty much said, "Fuck character development. I'm just gonna fix you." Like that's, I like that's I... how I look at it because I like I've been watching stuff. Well, I've been wa actually I've been watching some stuff that actually has people deal with their fucking past and actually lets them grow as characters and I'll talk more about that later. But um I think that's really cool and I think it's good character development, but this series didn't do that with that character and it would have been cool if they actually did. And I I don't they I still don't do it in a completely different sense, which is after it gets wiped out, she kind of has to like slowly figure out what was going on and and find out what she she missed and how she could have missed it, which is something that continues developing in season two later on. But you already see a little bit in this season, I think, where she's like, 
why the fuck do I not remember this guy? Like, he is here. He's part of the thing. And uh, See, that's, that, 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 that's another reason why I, it pissed me off whenever that happened. Is because not only did you, like, take all that stuff away and it caused all the problems I talked about before. Now she's going to be struggling with the rest of her life. What the fuck did I forget? What did you do to me? Like, all this shit. Like, you're going to emotionally destroy this girl over the rest of her life because of shit like this. Like, you you pretty much just fucked her for the rest of her life. I'm, I'm not trying to say, like, he was good by doing that. I still think Lelouch is more of a villain for most of the, sh- the show. But I still find it, com- like, really cool and entertaining to, to, like, see him doing all that stuff and being that villainous guy that does these things and kind of doesn't give a shit most of the time. And I, I do think, like, he kind of cared for her. It's just that he found that that was the easy solution uh, for him at that point. And I'm not saying this is right. I'm not saying he's a good character. I'm, I'm just saying, like, that uh, I totally accept that that happened because I, th- I thought it made sense for the character he was showing to be up to that point. So I'm, I, I was totally fine with it. And uh, why do you guys, but just changing subjects a little bit, why do you guys think about the whole uh, Mao arc where they show the different character, that there's a bit of a confrontation between him and Lelouch, and now some Mao's best with uh, CC? That was actually one of the few arcs I really enjoyed, to be honest. Like, all the right. stuff going on with that and... How he, like, resolved that situation, or tried to anyway, came back, but whatever. Um, I don't know. It was, it was more entertaining to me than mostly right. other stuff. I, I love the part where, like, the, they do the chess game, and actually, like, uh, as stupid as that, like, as that is, he used the gears on himself to make him forget his own plan, mm-hmm. and I just thought that was pretty ingenious from, like, the, the writing of the show as well. And, like, those, those are some of the things that, like, why make this show so, uh, res- resonated for me so much. Besides being like the right thing at the right time when I watched it, uh, just like those things that would keep blowing my mind, like, oh shit, they actually thought that he could look himself in the mirror and, and use the gears on himself, and I thought that was pretty cool. Also, in his last like confrontation against uh, Cornelia, or, or supposed to be the last confrontation against Cornelia, where they there was that, that knight who, who worked for her or whatever that was missing for a few episodes and suddenly he shows up and, and shows that like he was being controlled at all time and that he's the one that kind of mm-hmm. um, makes her lose that battle. But proof that Lelouch actually does care for his sister at the end is that he gives up on everything that's going on as soon as he goes to him and is like, oh shit, seems like her sister is missing. Yeah, I mean, they could have they could have honestly won right then and there. They could have pushed Britannia out of Japan, but he kind of made that decision there at the end to go save his sister. Yeah, that that's one right. thing that, I mean, I, I can see... Where, this is one of the few things I can actually see where it's coming from at that point, but it, it's still, like, he kind of lacks this thing where he's committed to it and everything, though, and he's kind of just like, well, fuck it all, you can die and I'm gonna lose everything just for this. Like, I can kind of see that a little bit, yeah, it makes sense, but I kind of half expected him to stay there anyway so he could fight for what he was trying to do. Like, no, send someone else off. after her. Like, huh? See, that's the thing, like, this... I, I never said, like, the show made me happy or something. Like, it is a show that pissed me off at all times. But uh, I still, like, enjoy the fuck out of it uh, while I was watching. I, I, I enjoy being pissed off at it and being like, oh, shit, what's going to happen next now that he's done, like, the stupid thing? Um, just just mentioning, he, there's also that one part where he orders Suzaku to survive, which I thought was a very interesting way to use the gears on him. And it kind of works against uh, his, his character and his personality because that means that he cannot sacrifice himself anymore. That mm-hmm. he can, out, he will always have to like fight for survival, uh, which is something that ends up like messing with a character's head a lot uh, as yeah. well. They also reveal a little more of Suzaku's past. They reveal the fact that he killed his own father. I don't know if you guys uh, saw much into that. I don't remember how much they develop of that in the in the first uh, season. Not too much, really. But that's, yeah, that's, not really. It is one thing I like though that being there because it gives uh, it, it gives much more of a reason for Suzaku to actually do what he does and everything, which. Like, like I said, I like him significantly more as a character and everything than Lelouch. Like, I wish he would have been the main character and everything would have been great. <laughs> okay. Like, he, uh, e- even if it's the exact same story, just having it from his perspective the whole time, like, like I said, I would have loved the, like, the, the anime would have actually gotten a decent rating from me at that point. Okay. Like, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I do like how they, they expanded on his past a little bit with that, though, and showed his character development through it. Although... Whenever Yuffie died and everything, like him snapping and everything, was so against his character. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. Well, I feel like he was very obsessed with her at that point. He was kind of like seeing on her a more like hope for for being good and having a purpose and actually achieving what he what he was fighting for. And the moment she died in that fucked up way 
after like completely ruining her 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 image because like Suzaku knew who she was like he knew she was a good person and now not only mm-hmm. she died but she also like to the eyes of everyone else was like the devil and like nobody would ever see her in the same way and like not the thing is Lelouch didn't really didn't just ruin her life he also ruined her memory uh in the minds of the other people so that's why that was so fucked up and I could kind of see like Suzaku being like shit like I got to kill this dude like um yeah and, like I said anyway, it makes which, sense and everything yeah yeah which takes us to the uh the last part of the season which is where they finally uh like Suzaku finally shoots like Lelouch's masks and it falls off and it's revealed that uh shoots Zero's mask my bad and it's revealed that Lelouch is behind it so Colin and Suzaku then find out uh who Lelouch actually who, who Zero actually was and I there's so many elements in that scene that make me like it a lot and the first one is that there was there were a lot of hints in the series before that Lelouch could be uh Zero I feel like and I, I would be surprised if if Suzaku was was impressed by his discovery and I like that they didn't make him go like oh shit I don't know or like just just snap out or something they they actually make him see at it in a see it in a way where where it almost it's almost as if he's thinking like yep that's exactly what I imagined it's unfortunate but that's what it is and I don't know I kind of just liked how they did that scene in that way um also the way that Lelouch kind of t- tries to talk his way out of it. Like, we need to fight together to save Nunnally or whatever. And Suzaku's like, nope, you're dying right now. So, anyway, I, I really like the way they bu- they build that scene up. But my question to you guys, and I kind of already see CJ's answer on this, but uh, I, I feel like Hlecker would have a different one. Are you excited enough to watch the second season based on the way this ended? Or you're like, whatever, fuck it. I don't care anymore. I I will watch the second season. Um, I'm kind of interested in it, but... So... I feel like, so you keep mentioning how Lelouch is a character you loved to hate. And In a way, like... I can, I, I can, as as you said that, I was thinking of characters that I loved to absolutely despise. One of them being from a series called Hunter Cross Hunter. His name is Hisoka. <laughs> There's reasons why I despise him so much. But he's a really cool character, and they did that very well. Um, in Hisoka, much, much like Lelouch, is very selfish. He only looks out for what he wants to do, and that's all. Um, but I, there's something about Hisoka that is just better than Lelouch, and I can't pinpoint it, but I hate to say that. God, I can't believe I said that. Anyways. What? There's you can't some believe his- you say what? I, I missed something? <laughs> You'd have okay. to watch the show to understand. You'd have oh, to watch okay. the show to understand. So, point is, everyone should watch Hunter Cross Hunter, the new season. It's really good. I really recommend it. How they ended it. The very final arc was absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. They did it perfectly. Watch it. It's a good series. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Lelouch is badass. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I fucking love, like, watching what he does. I agree. Like, I was pissed off at him, like, so many times, and yet I would always be like, oh, shit, he's badass again, like, a few episodes after. So, I don't know. I guess See, it's a taste thing. For me, it wasn't even necessarily pissed off at him. It was more, it's more like the thing if your parents are like, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. <laughs> it's just like, every time, like, he does something, it's like, fucking really, man? What the fuck is wrong with you? Like I, right? I don't know. I I can't stand to watch any like him anymore. That's why like I'm not gonna okay. end up watching any more of it. I don't care That's who fine. dies at the end there or what happened at the end. Like I've I've checked out at this point. The only point that I enjoyed, legitimately enjoyed, of the second half of the season was whenever they were making the big pizza and oh. they accidentally <laughs> oh threw the dough God. onto the tree <laughs> and CC was just like. Pizza. It was incredibly <laughs> sad. Like I laughed like hell right there. That was the only like moment of enjoyment I really had out of the second half of the season. Other Holy than that, shit, it wasn't okay. it wasn't really like torture for me to watch it, but it was hard for me to get through it. I didn't. I, I did not like it. Uh, what was that one we watched? Um, Saver Marionette. Jay. Saver Marionette. That's it wasn't that one. bad, but it was kind of close. It, it was hard for me to get through it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's uh, my bad. you brought this my on bad. yourself. I, I told you okay, like this was gonna happen no, if I didn't fine. like it. I 
I see. I the thing is, I totally understand like everything that you mentioned as being bad. Like none of that was still able to make me not enjoy it as much as I did. That's the I guess that's the main difference. Like I still had like so much fun watching it and being excited for what was gonna happen next and everything. And like the moment this the first season ended, I I started the next one right up. But I can see like again like people have different tastes and I all the all the points that you made. I'm like okay, I see that. Like that makes sense. Like, oh, so one thing happens. one thing I'll say is one thing that actually did not turn me off because it was actually well done was the mech stuff of this. That didn't bother me at all in this show. It was okay. fine. It was just the actual show itself was bad. <laughs> like everything funny. else. <laughs> it is funny because the one thing you were like, I don't think I'm going to like it because mechs. And now yeah, you're like... <laughs> it's, the, it's the only thing I actually was like, that's cool. I, was, I actually enjoyed that part of the show. It was one of the few <laughs> that was like that, really. Oh, which reminded me, like, the the guy who keeps being called Orange, Jeremiah, he comes back, like, in his own, like, cyborg body or whatever, being part yeah. of a mech. Like, He's this fucking big cool. orange mech. <laughs> yeah, I love that character. He was no Von Stronheim. No. Whatever. Like, he, like, I just love how, like, he keeps coming back. And, like, it keeps happening. It's just, like, I don't know, funny whenever he does. Because cause he gets, like, so pissed off at, at Zero. Like, he wants to murder him as much. Like, <laughs> at, at this point, like, pretty much everybody's pissed off at Zero, honestly. Yeah. Um, Hope one of them anyway, kills I him, think, so. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil that. Because Collector's gonna watch the second season. Yeah. It's him against the world, guys. Guess who wins? Lelouch. You'll have to no, see. You'll have to see. You'll have to see, Dean. Because honestly, um, the biggest point I have to make about this series, I can't even talk about it until you watch the second series. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. it is. I, I think even Dan will probably be like, how could you say that? But that's for another day. Yeah. Uh, as soon as Clacker finishes, we'll, we'll have like a conversation about it. Uh, probably not in the show, but whatever. So oh, you can have it gotta... like uh, on the next episode or one after that or whatever. I don't give a shit. I don't get care if you spoil okay, anything for it. So um, we also got a glimpse of Shinizel, who is the next like prince that shows up because we get Clavis, Cornelia, uh, Euphemia, who Euphemia just died. Lelouch ended up having to kill her at the end there. But then we also see the second prince come into scene, who is Shinizel v. Britannia, who is the blonde, tall guy. Um, and then there's also Odysseus, who is the first prince, and those are the guys that like kind of the the next because the next season starts focusing on. So they they also bring up like a, a different kind of opponent to the table, which is quite interesting. Um, I don't think you guys will have anything to say about those because like they barely showed up at this point. Let me see. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, about the only Back thing I really have... have left on this is um, I guess what I'd rate it. Like I, you guys can see on my anime list here and everything, but uh. Yeah, I give it about a four out of ten. So I think it's gonna kill mine and your compatibility, probably, Dan. But yeah, wow. probably. Yeah, it's it both both seasons are actually rated pretty highly, and they're ranked within the top twenties on Mal. Yeah, like Code Geass is not like a random show. It's also like widely recognized as like a really good show. But okay, <laughs> to each his own. Like it's not just a it's not just a random thing that I like. Um, like I can I can I definitely know. see why people would like it. There's just certain things that turn me off of it too much. Yeah, that's fine. I yeah. would probably give it probably around a six or seven, probably more Shut towards up. a seven. Um, so it's kind of it's it's average. I can see the really good things that they do in the series, like I love when Lelouch outsmarts his opponents and stuff like that. But I really like that. I just hate when he's a douche to everyone. But okay. Oh, thinking about there is one more point I wanted to bring up, and um. This, this kind of goes into as far as, like, the, the story design itself and the plot itself. It, it almost seemed like a cop-out sometimes of how much they were using, like, the Gia stuff. Where, like, they would just be like, oh, there was this guy who he already committed to doing that and he's just going to do that thing. It's like, ah, okay, whatever. Like, I can understand he can do that and, act, like, he can do it to, like, fucking everyone if he gets a chance and everything, but... I, I felt like they used that a little bit too much to, like... Like, whenever he was fighting Cornelia and everything, having the dude throw the fucking spear at her and everything, it's like, oh, yeah, of course he fucking got somebody to do that already, you know, whatever. Like, it's... it's I don't know. That's another thing that kind of bothered me a lot, is they kept using that so much. Well, I feel like it gets harder to pull it off as the series moves on, because there's, like, more people that he has already used it on. So, like, at this point, like, he can't do Suzaku anymore, or Cornelia, or, uh, you know... I, that dude died anyway, but... Like, because uh, usually it's the main characters that end up doing significant things with the Gears. Um, yeah. So, so with, with time, it does get to a point where, like, okay, it's kind, he's kind of limited on like who he can use at this point. 
Um, See, I could, I understand that, but like, then they just have other people come in who it's like, oh, this is just some random office worker we've never met before, and she's gonna do this thing because it'll solve everything that he wanted to do. It's like, sure, whatever. Sure. That being said, it's his only power, so it's kind of like what he ends up having to use all the time. I, I, I agree. I would have I... liked it better as far as like the battles and everything like that happened if it focused more, I guess. Like if, if it didn't use that as a scapegoat as much and it only used his, his military tactics and everything like that instead. Because he was really good at that. That was like one of the only strong points he had was he was good at like tactics and shit. And um, I don't know, there was just some times where it's like, oh, someone's getting into trouble. It's like, where's the dude with the gas who's going to save the day? Oh, there it is. He just fucking shot that guy. Now, cool. Now we're done. Moving on. <laughs> So, okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have. That anybody else got any other comments or anything? Clacker? Nope. Okay, you guys are all crazy. Code Geass is amazing. Next segment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not crazy. I just didn't like it, man. That's fine. I'm I'm just joking. I'm partially joking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Still, man, fucking the the only person I I legitimately liked was Cece. She was fucking awesome. She's awesome. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Um. Next, we're moving on to Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. Uh. Was it 36 through 41? Yep. I did not so, read, so yeah. I'm sorry, we're going to spoil everything for you, because deal with it. So That's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to go step out for a minute, because I need to make some food, because I'm hungry. So I'll be back in like 10 minutes. <sighs> okay. okay. What are we going to do without Just our leader? Just don't take that long. What are you gonna- it's going to fall apart. It's gonna, gonna fall apart. The leader's you know, guys, leaving. We're controlling this. Come down. I'm calm gonna down, come guys. back calm and down. like fucking Dan's gonna be on fire or yeah. some shit. <laughs> you guys ever yeah, seen? Can totally like come all the way to Brazil too. <laughs> it's right. on fire. I'll be back. Yes. Okay. okay. So Dan. All right. Um, okay. We started with uh, getting to know more of the All Night. I just want to make sure he, I just try to yes. cover yes. everything here because like we had a, a, a chapter focused on the All Night. And they right. kind of showed how he, like, his father married a different woman because his mother died. And then it seems like he doesn't get along well with his family. And then they show that when the owl comes c- comes in and, and she's like, oh, you got the, and he's like, you got the owl power. Or, or, I'm sorry, you got the, the night power or whatever. Um, he is one that also wants to destroy, destroy. Earth. Kind of like the princess and the lizard knight. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And also they hint that in the previous battle that they keep talking about, the Owl Knight may have influenced something in a negative way because it was only the the Owl Knight and the Dog Knight and the Crown Knight were like the left like people in the battle or whatever. And ultimately, the the new Dog Knight, who was the guy who died, I always forget his name. Uh, one of his last words was "Don't trust the Owl." Right. So there's definitely something in there. Uh, I feel like it's definitely. I, I feel like it's more. Than just oh the the owl betrayed the other ones. I feel like there's there's a little more depth in there, but we still have to see the details. But definitely the owl uh, the owl knight has become way more interesting. Um, Indeed. Right now. And and then we pursue to see more of the mouse knight and the the praying mantis knight, the lovely couple. Ish. And unfortunately, yeah. And unfortunately, the mouse knight was the cook. Pretty nice guy. I liked him. He sacrifices cool. himself. Yeah, he sacrifices himself in the in a battle against the the nine eyed golden to save the the girl that he liked. And that was a very harsh scene for a, a, a few different reasons. First one is that you see him going to sacrifice himself. And I'm like, oh shit, nice! He's sacrificing himself for the girl. That's badass. And then they show how like the the spear pierces through. Him and the girl still like so the, the like he goes in front of the spear, but the spear still pierces through both of them. So it kind of and, and and then he confesses to her like, "Oh, I love you," right before dying, and it gives the impression that both of them died. But then wait, his wish, as we had seen before, but I had completely forgotten, was that if she was mortally wounded uh, or fatally wounded, she wouldn't die; she would come back to life, and that's what happens. So at the end, uh, I think Hakano is her name, the men, uh, praying mantis knight does not die, but that also means that the Mouse Knight died in vain and that he had no need to sacrifice himself at that point. Which, to me, kind of made it seem like he was kind of stupid. <laughs> but at the same time, I could kind of see how, like, he kind of acted on reflex. And, like, he probably didn't think it through at that point. He was just like, oh, shit, the golem is going to kill her. I'm going to save her, be a hero or whatever. And just, just like, he just went trying to save her. And at the end, he didn't even need to do that. Uh, that was interesting. 
I was oh I, I think that death hit me a little harder than the dog knight even as I like that character uh, yeah a little more it definitely yes. hit a lot harder not to just not to just not to just you but to the actual characters in the story because in the story yeah. what do they do the next time they fight a golem they're all in funeral outfits because they're like god damn it you killed one of our friends we're fucking pissed and and I feel like that's... he was the one that like everybody liked because he was that guy that you cannot dislike, you know. Like he was that very nice, cool guy. That, like there's no way you cannot like him. I mean, and he it was like Clecker. Food for you. I mean, like how can you not like Clecker? But uh, anyway, so yeah, that was hard. And then, uh, but that was a way. Again, the same way that the the death of the dog knight was to build up the lizard knight. And shit, I'm gonna look for those names, because, like, I, I'm tired of just saying animals. That's fine. Um, but it's so but good! I, lizard it, knight is Yui. Uh, I can't remember Mouse mm -hmm. Knight off the top of my head. I can't remember no, all I was the just knights. gonna say, the same, the same way I, th I feel like the death of the, the Mouse Knight was to build up the uh, man, uh, brain Lying mantis mantis? knight. Yeah, because cause then she was pissed off, and there was this whole like flashback chapter where she was kind of remembering how they grew up together how she would always take care of him but then he would also like uh kind of in exchange uh also always be you know happy and and try to take care of her as well even in his own like stupid crybaby way and, and they, they kind of have like a very nice relationship so so seeing him go was very harsh for her and and that took her to to go to the next level and actually become a warrior so, and I think that's the word that she uses. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to cut this off later, but I just want to uh, research something really quick. I just want to get this, those guys' names so that I can talk about this a little more comfortably and without having to repeat the word knight all the time and animal names. It's not that bad. Yeah. Granted, for people who actually haven't read the series, it kind of helps out to actually have actual names. But, okay. Um, so, besides that, we also saw... Ah, fuck this. I can't find her. Oh, okay, whatever. We also saw the Snake Knight yeah. become the Invisible Knight, which was cool. Because she fought yep. with the Lizard Knight. Yep. Or she fought with Yuri. She tried to take that position and she ended up winning. Which right. I thought, like, I actually I actually really like that they did that. Like, I really like that the main character didn't win just because he's the main character. <laughs> like, I loved how they showed her uh, being more tactful. Uh... And, and trying to uh, dedicate herself more to that battle, and she deserved to win, and she won, and now she is the badass uh, legendary knight or whatever they call it. Um, yeah, it so was I really. really like that it was really cool seeing her win. She also, also all that training she does with that like hobo guy paid off. So yep. um, it's kind of cool seeing her get that position. Um, but. Um, it's it'll be interesting as you get later on in the series. Um, one thing I want to mention is the part after that, right? So the part after that, they run into a very interesting person. The eleventh. Uh, the eleventh golem. golem that yeah. copies people. So what did you think about that when you first saw it? Uh, that was pretty interesting. What I what I find like it's the most interesting part of that golem is that he's the first one that seems to show intelligence. So it, I feel like he's gonna be one of the like it's gonna be tough to to beat that guy because they just beat the uh, nine When you say one. copy, do you mean like the person specifically or just their actions? Like he can become someone else and act the way that the other person would act. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So the first time he shows up, he's like pretending to be the dog knight who died in the beginning. Uh, and and at one point they're like, wait, what? Like, didn't you die? But then they 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 quickly realize, oh shit, this must be a trick from the wizard. And then they fight him, and then he reveals his true form or whatever. But that's gonna be very interesting. I also find it cool how like the 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 series is not really becoming stale and just repeating the same thing over and over again. I feel like they're they're always being able to come up with uh, new uh, new aspects to mix up the plot a little bit and not. It isn't. It's not just a matter of like, oh, each golem's getting stronger and they're just gonna fight like one after the other. Uh, besides that, there's the, the supposedly the tenth golem, which is quite interesting, which they haven't beat yet, and then the eleventh golem is very interesting as well. And they're all coming at the same time, um, so I, I I'm really curious for what would happen next. But I have a feeling that by by the, like this was volume six, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I, I have a feeling that they will kill like all the golems by volume eight or whatever, and that the there's there's gonna be like a big twist uh, for the end of the story. But we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> Cause, cause it's been it's been moving quick. Like they've been getting through those golems pretty quick now. So. Yep. Um. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens with the eleven eyed golem. He is he is by far my favorite golem by a long shot. Um. He's also Roberto's favorite golem, and you will get to see why. Um. He was just introduced in these chapters, but he's super interesting and you kind of i want to say i'm not going to ruin anything but y you get to kind of feel for him and i'll just leave it okay. at that um but yeah there's a lot of re really interesting things that um happened in these arcs and a lot of really saddening things uh the cook the cook's death like hit me hard the first time i read this i was like ah oh, no another one died no um, but it, I, to a certain degree... I was kind of hoping that he would not repeat that, but that's fine. <laughs> to a certain Because CJ was out when we were talking before, it's, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Dude, I told you, it's fine. To a certain... <laughs> I'm I'm going to be leaving again in, like, oh, let's see. No, we're done. We're pretty much Eight done Eight and a half this. minutes, because pizza rolls. To a certain degree, I like that they did that, but at the same time, I'm sad that they did that, because I really like the character. I like it because... It still it, it still laid down the thing of shit. They can die at any moment when they're fucking yeah. doing this. But at the same time, I'm like, no, he was a really cool character. Why'd you do that? But yeah. I can see. As I said, but I can. See I stand why. by my point that I like them kind of cleaning off the character count a little bit. But at the same time, they kind of killed one that I didn't want you to die now. But whatever. It's yeah. You, they, you, you love it and you hate it. So. They um, also do this great job of like building up a character very well before they kill him, which they do. makes me mad. The author so. does a fantastic job of you, attaching you to a character and then saying, "All right, <laughs> okay, like, it's time." Because at at it, that point, I was kind of seeing it coming because they were like spending some time building him up and showing his past a little bit and all that, and I was like, "Shit, this one of those may be the next one to die in." Whoop. Well, there it is. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. See, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, uh, how JoJo's was, where, like, no one was safe. They could just kill anyone off at any time and everything. That's right. And a similar type of thing. They had a lot of buildup and everything, and that's one reason why I've been enjoying this one as much as I have, because it's just, like, shit can just go wrong. Like, the fucking, like, the Dog Knight solidified that for me whenever he fucking died. Everything that just, like, oh, shit, shit can go wrong in this fucking manga really fast. Yeah. So. Yep. That set the tone for the show really well. Yeah. Anyway, it's not a show I also feel yet. like they use they they make a good use of death in the show as well, just like using death to build up uh, other characters. You know, like when one character dies, the grief for for him dying makes other characters grow more, and they do that again this time. It's really nice to see that. So. Yeah. Overall, really good volume. Yeah. Sadly, all really all nice deaths one. in this series have a meaning, and that's really cool and interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm glad. So you're enjoying it, Dan, right? Positives yeah. all around. Cool. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Um, volume seven, you'll really enjoy volume seven. You'll get to see some cool things from Cat Knight, and you'll get to see a lot of really cool things with the Eleven Eyed Golem. Okay, that makes me think that the Cat Knight is probably the next one to die. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> all right. Cool. I think we're done. Yep. Okay, um, so yeah, I guess we're going to go into other stuff we've been watching or reading, and in five and a half minutes, I'm going to step out for a minute, just so you guys know, so you're not just like, oh, where did CJ go? So I'm going to talk okay. about High School DxD in five minutes while you're gone. <laughs> well, no, you got to talk about three episode six with me, at least. Okay, fair enough. But, um, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and start off then, fuck it. Um, what did I watch this week? Watched a little bit of Log Horizon, and I started getting caught up on that, finally. Cause... Ah, yep, I need to do that one. I'm uh I'm right at the point where they they just left with the wagon and everything to start the oh, quest. Yeah. So it's kind of I'm, interesting. I'm excited. Uh, um yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen from there cuz it looks like it it could be really good of uh, a lot of character development for a lot of the younger characters and everything or younger as far as like levels and everything. So I'm excited to see where that's going to go. That and I like how they started to dip a little bit more into people's backstories too, which is like, oh shit, this this show's getting much deeper than I ever thought it would. <laughs> so 
It's good that yeah. they are doing that, though. That makes me happy. Yeah, um, what else? Alright, I got caught up on, or just read, I think it was like, there's like three or four chapters of Domestic Nakanojo over yeah, the past week. It's there was. Ridiculous. What was right, the last one you read? About that? Uh, 49. The Wait, okay. Trip. Oh, yeah. Three or f- three or four chapters in one week? Yeah. Yeah. So do they just release it when they feel like? No, the, the Raws were ahead and the translators finally caught up. Yeah, um, the translator just busted some shit out and everyone's like super happy because of it, too. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm really curious as to where this is all going now that that other guy's gonna find out their little secret. Yes. Oh my god. That like, th- this is this is very reminiscent. This is why I wanted you to uh, read some of my favorite series so much, like Suzuka, Kimono Idemachi, and all that. Like this is the type of stuff that that um my favorite author does. He's just like, oh, it's it has some semblance of somehow becoming normal. Nope, shit's changing. Someone's finding out something they shouldn't, or someone's dying, or this thing's happened. Like something's going to happen. Right. So. Yeah, I have no fucking idea where this is going to go, because every time I've made a guess about this, I've been completely wrong, and yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm very excited. I've, I've, I'm very glad I picked this one up, because when I read it, I was like, ah, I probably won't like that, but, because there was like, I think, three chapters out when I first started, and um, yeah, it's been fantastic, and it keeps getting better and better, and keeps being more of an emotional roller coaster too. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. You should check out her other work, too. It's pretty. I I will now, like since I've seen this and everything, and read up to what I have, and been like, "Holy shit, this is really good." So I'm curious. Like, remember you said you were going to start um, Suzuka? I think I I actually did. Oh, how far did yeah. you? Uh, chapter forty nine or fifty. Oh shit! Yeah. Fucking plowed through that. I did. I actually need your help because the trend, the the scanlations that I've been reading are pretty piss poor. Like just grammar errors boxes that aren't even translated so you have like um, a good you have like a good version of that that'd be awesome i can look at the version i have and everything yeah um like oh. what's going on in the story where you're at right now i'm curious uh let's see he just broke up with with the other girl honoka and uh i think he's training for something if i remember correctly in the track and field club yeah and this is where he like finally gets fired up like fuck yeah i'm gonna do this and everything or whatever not, not yet, because Suzuka's still mad at him for what he said. That Suzuka's mad at him a lot yeah, yeah, the show. This right. means nothing to me. I know. Okay, okay. So he, he like told her that he broke up with her because he found her annoying, and she was like super mad at him for that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm at that part. So we'll see how that goes from there. Hang how have you been liking it so far? I'm enjoying it a lot, actually. As, as you could tell that I went through 50 chapters already. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. So what was that? I have a question. Hmm. Has there been an anime of the series you guys are talking about? Yes. Yes. Do it doesn't cover it, near the whole story. Yes, I do. I've seen a couple episodes of this series. Yeah, you probably have. Oh, yeah, you were over here when I was watching it one day. Yep. So I I know partially what you guys are talking about. Not very much, but I can understand why Roberto likes it so much. It's yeah. good. It's it's a fucking emotional roller coaster, man. It's it's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, all both of the other ones by him are like that too, Kimono Yudemachi and Fuka. So I do like how the that one girl keeps being a plot device, where she like shows up at his door and he's like, "Hey, I'm selling newspapers. Plus, I'm giving these yeah. free tickets away." Oh, hey, I work for the TV station now. Here's some, some free tickets. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. funny. Anyway, I'll uh, pass it over to you, Roberto, with the other stuff you've been watching, and I'll be right back. All right, sure. Uh, I mean, I guess my weeklies, uh, my love story. That one's still pretty funny, and they just finished up kind of a big thing, so I wonder how they're going to mix it up in the next couple episodes. Is that the one whose Japanese name is Oremonogatari? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the one with, like, the really uh, big guy, and he falls in love with, like, this little girl. It's. it's I, I, I still haven't watched it, but I keep, like, hearing a lot of people talk about it. I've started listening to, to a few other anime podcasts as well, where, like, they keep talking about that show. So. It's it's pretty good. That's one that's it's it's pretty gotta good. be good if people are talking about it. Right. Is is this the one where like the guys used to see girls falling in love by his best friend or something yeah. and then eventually one girl falls in love with him but he like right. doesn't his best friend yeah, doesn't realize he, it. He's usually the wingman for his best friend. And oh, right. Not not exactly. His best friend is kind of like the typical shojo, you know, like guy where like all the girls are in oh, love okay. with him and like the main character goes for him and they build a relationship or whatever. What well, it's not like that in this one. Like the main girl actually falls for the other guy and not not him. Right, right. Yeah, she she falls for like this sumo wrestler looking guy. So 
It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a unique twist, honestly, like on the genre, because it's not just like all the tropes you kind of expect from shoujo manga or, and stuff. So it's actually kind of interesting. That sounds pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I keep hearing people like if there's one thing that I'm gonna pick up, that might be. Oh, it. definitely, definitely. As people keep talking. about I'm pretty it. sure you'll like yeah. it, Dan. It definitely falls into one of the few categories you like. So few categories of like. Yeah. Of show. What do you mean by that? Like, I like all kinds of I shows. I know, but, like, I know you enjoy these kind of, like, lighthearted romances a lot, just like CJ and okay. I do as well, so. Okay, cool. Um, is that all you're watching? Uh, I finally finished Death Parade after, like, a month and a half that I finished. The ending was kind of interesting. Okay. Uh, like, interesting and they might do another season? No. Or interesting as it's just like, oh, I guess that's kind of cool. Just kind of the, the themes... That they kind of revealed, that, and a lot of the story that they revealed finally about one of the characters and her purpose and everything. So it, it the ending was actually kind of bittersweet, honestly. So mm. that's the best way I could put it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, I think that's all I got really, other than weekly. So cool. I finally watched the first, and I only watched the first episode of Kill la Kill. Finally. Which. Yeah, it's something I never. It's like, a gone slippery into. roller and coaster. After you get to like episode three, yeah. you're just gonna go spiraling down. Oh, okay. and you can't <laughs> stop episode watching. four is okay. great. I love episode four. Like, episode four. Yeah, it was, was pretty so crazy and, and really amazing as well. But I kind of just want to take it on my own time. So it was just one day where like I was almost, I was laying in bed, wanted to go to sleep, but I kind of decided to just watch this one thing before I went to sleep, and then I decided to go uh, and watch the first episode of that. Mm. It was pretty cool. So I was just telling them, CJ, I watched the first episode of Kill la Kill. But just the first nice. episode. Nice. And, like, it was it was pretty amazing. I really liked it. I just uh, didn't get back to it yet because I, I ended up going to bed after that. And then, But I kind of just want to go through it my own pace. I feel like every episode, like, oh, well, I only watched the first one. But the, fir- the first episode already felt, like, so packed. Yeah. Like, it already feels like you get so much from just one episode that I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, that whole series is like that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's one that I don't feel like rushing through it, but I'm going to keep going and probably have more to talk about next week. Nice. Cool. Um, so I, I also watched uh, this one very old uh, three-episode uh, show. I only watched the first one because there, there, there are three episodes that are like 45 minutes each called Yotoden or something like that, which is apparently like a rip-off Ninja Scroll. That's that's what people tend to refer to it as, and I didn't like it very much. But anyway, I only watched this because apparently Phil really likes it, and then he wants he wanted me to watch it. So but it's just like usual um, samurai ninja old stuff against monsters. Uh, Oda Nobunaga is involved as well. Like I feel like they like to put him in anime. Yeah, a few times he holds a very specific historical significance. So yeah, but in this show, he's kind of the villain. That's what it seems like. But it, anyway, I won't get it. I won't get into it. It's it's a long historical discussion. So okay, and then I also just like barely just started reading a uh, manhwa, Ooh. which is the kind of thing that Klecker likes. I don't know it's what called, you're talking about. Yeah, and this one my girlfriend wanted me to start. It's called Anara Sumanara, yep. which is about this. I feel like it's Jose or something like that because. It's it's girly, but it's also kind of dark. But it's mostly about this girl that has to work to buy her own food and and like keep her and her her sister alive, essentially while she's still studying and she's going through like a lot of bad stuff in her life and and having to fight to to get money and everything to be able to survive pretty much. And then she eventually finds this magician who lives in a in an abandoned uh, theme park. And this magician claims that he does true magic and stuff. And the first time they meet, he actually gives her money. Or he actually, like, m- takes money from her and makes money, like, duplicates her money. And she's like, oh, that's probably just a stupid trick or whatever. And he's like, no, I'm a true magician and everything. But the the funny thing about this one is that, like, the art style is totally weird and crazy. Like, there's literally a dude that has a neck three times the size of his head. Like, randomly. And there's no explanation whatsoever for why he is like that, at least so far. So, I don't know. It's a very weird manga, or manhwa. But just something I got started on. So, yeah, I just got started on those three things. And I'm probably going to finish the manga because it's, it's short. Uh, I don't think I'm going to watch the other two you know, episodes of Yododen. But I'm going to keep going with Kill la Kill on my own pace. That's about it. Yes. All right, do you already go, Clicker? Nope. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. I'm about to throw us into, like, a 30-minute conversation. All right. So, oh I... No, you're not. <laughs> He's exaggerating. I 
caught up with, or I haven't fully caught up, but I watched episode 2 through 6 of High School DxD. Now, I will make topics on every single episode I watched, because that's what I want to do. <laughs> so, episode 2 was pretty much, uh, you, you pretty much got to see some struggles with uh, Koneko. And you got to see why she's struggling and how she's kind of fighting against what she truly is. Like, she's not embracing her true powers because you get to learn that her sister's batshit fucking crazy. And she decided that her she was going to kill her master. So, brief brief story. That's That was kind of cool. Um, episode 3. Ha! Ah, episode 3. Where do I even start with episode 3? Let's fucking hear uh, it, man. Such a good episode. So episode three was when Koneko was face to face with her sister, and her sister was pretty much trying to take Koneko from the Rius the the Rius family, pretty much. <laughs> and Rius. Issei was having none of that shit. <laughs> Issei needed to learn how to unleash his breaker mode. How does he do it? I have to poke your nipples, Rius. It's the only yep. way. Then, then there when was like the... I loved how there was a debate. Like, which one do I do? Which he's like, do just do both. Right? Yeah, and he's like, oh shit, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I loved in the background. There's just that that, that memory of when you poke it, uh... the moan will happen. And he was just like, it happened. And it was just, it was, it was great. It was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and his fucking balance breaker and just starts kicking ass and shit. Yeah, I loved how like. Uh, Kuroko, Kuroko, Kuroka, Kuroka. I think it's Kuroka. Kuroko was just like, "I'm gonna throw stuff at you," and he's just like, "Sup? Yep, <laughs> I'm in my breaker form. Fuck you." Yep. So it was, it was really cool to see how powerful that was. It was. I loved the entire debate of like everything that happened. Um, in that episode was hilarious. Um, mm -hmm. and then. Episode four, God, that cliffhanger! Oh my God! I told you, I man. Almost, I told you that's one of the worst cliffhangers you'll ever see. It. I was like, Oh my God, no! What's happening? But so you um, didn't believe me a few weeks ago when I told you that's like one of the worst cliffhangers I've ever seen. It's ah, uh, it was. It wasn't that bad because, uh, like, if you watched the end credits, it actually showed the next episode and it showed yeah. Issei being all lively and stuff. So it wasn't that bad. Yeah, that, that kind of ruins it. If like. It would have been worse if the epilogue, like the epilogue to the episode, just showed all of them like depressed and it'd be really dark. I'd have been like, "No, this didn't just happen." You see, but, that's one um, reason why I don't ever actually watch the things like, "Oh, next time on this" or whatever. That's why I don't ever watch those because I want the actual episode to show me what happens. And even yeah. though it happened very early in five, where it's like, "Okay, he's fine" or whatever. But just that moment where it's like, holy shit, he could be dead, and oh my god, Rius is about to go on a rampage and destroy the underworld and the world and everything else. Yeah, I was like, like oh god, shit. Rius is finally OP. So it works both ways. Um, yeah. yeah. But an interesting note, besides all the awesome things that happened, is Issei has always, and even in throughout this entire thing, had a positive effect on every single one of them while they were fighting. Um, mm hmm for Kano, she finally was able to accept kind of who she was because she was kind of having a little bit of trouble. The same thing with Koneko of like how she was trying, she was having trouble accepting what she came from. Yeah. And she finally accepted it. And when she did, my God, there was a lightning storm that fucking rained down hell, um, mm -hmm. which was awesome. And like just a, a couple of them, it, it was interesting seeing it. it the series did a great job of showing how much Issei meant to all of them because when Issei took that took that hit, every single one of them just went batshit crazy on mm. these poor creatures. I felt sorry <laughs> for them, but yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was an interesting episode. I also loved how they started going into not only the standard like just demons, angels, and stuff like that. They've also started going into, like, other, like, Norse mythology. Loki is a major god in Norse mythology. It's really cool that they introduced him. 
Um, and then subsequently fucking annihilated him with the hammer. Yeah. I don't know about that, because at the very end well, he was supposedly like, he did, so. I'm going to curse you. I don't know what that means. I'm really interested in it. It kind of sucks that we haven't seen anything from it. Um, Episode 5. I cannot express enough how much I love this episode. Um, for me, for, it was just because of Kaneko. Uh, like that, I, I know. Uh, like when I saw it, when she was like laying in his lap, and she looked up, and she's like, "You're my piece, yeah." And I was like, "God damn it! <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. way too adorable." You even used the "nya" perfectly. Yeah, and um, she continues to do now. It's fucking great. Like, yeah, she just like sits in his lap, licking a lollipop. Yeah. I was like, "Ah, oh, man, she's just gonna keep doing this." Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but the thing, that, that wasn't my favorite part about that episode, actually. Um, my favorite part about the episode is how kind of chill it was. Like, literally, him and Akeno just went out and had an actual date. That's mm-hmm. never happened in this series, besides maybe Rius. But it was really cool to just see them actually go out and have fun, and then... Akeno actually kind of had to address her issue. And it was really cool. It was a really fun episode. And I enjoyed it a lot. Um, Mainly because it was like they were just hanging out. And then they like Akeno actually addressed her issue with her father. And you got to see why she was like that. You got to see kind of the entire picture of why Akeno was that way. Um, We also saw something interesting. When Akeno was pretty much, I'm going to use lust to um solve my solve my problems there's kind of like a flashback memory which was interesting and apparently that wasn't the first time that was happened that happened so that's also interesting an interesting note that i'm looking forward to but i really enjoyed um that just how 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 fun that episode was just how much fun they had um and yeah uh that was episode five i really enjoyed it uh, episode six. Episode six. Um, episode six was oh, Arena comes to the school. Uh, and what else happened in that episode? Dude, like straight up starts hitting on Asha and like asking her to marry. Oh him yeah, kid. that's right. The demon that hits on Asha. That's really fucking creepy. Um, <laughs> he's super creepy. He just like he's like I don't know. It's super creepy. It's just fucking creepy. It's also creepy that, like, of, like, he was, alright, so apparently he's a major demon, right? How did he get captured and almost killed in the first place? Come he was on. A kid. God, nah. Yeah. No, Rius was a kid and she didn't go through that shit. Rius is also the daughter of Lucifer. Mm, fair enough. That's a little different than being a high class demon, or devil, fair or enough. whatever. Fair enough. She's the goddamn daughter of Lucifer. Fair enough. She can destroy enough. the world if she wants. Fair enough, CJ. Fair enough. Um, but, uh, yeah. So besides that, besides me completely going on and on about High School DxD, I also read my standard chapter stuff. So I read Gamer. Uh, Gamer's actually going on break. It finished a season of um, Manwa, so it's actually going to be on break till next season. Um, which, they ended it where it probably needed to be ended. Um... So that's that's good. Um, read One Piece. Um, I read what else? I read Kingdom. I read Fang Shang G. I read uh, Fang Shang G's kind of been depressing. Uh, Roberta, you've read that, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm so today. there goes all the generals. Oh, all of them. Most of them. Just the three that they focused a lot on. Exactly. <laughs> My point. Um, yeah, so Feng Shen Ji, uh, Tower of God, and, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I could go on and on about High School DxD some more, but I'm kind of reaching my limit, so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> it goes on and on and on and on, don't stop believing. Alright, let's yeah, go. Yeah, you, you should stop there, and thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the song says don't stop, CJ. Believing, you can yeah. believe all you want. Yeah, you yeah believe, believe all you want. Just, just don't sing and everything. So you can believe I, I can't Dan's believe gonna stop. that Issei's going to hook up with Rius. Just don't stop believing. I yeah. think he's gonna actually. I, I legitimately think he's gonna hit the harem end. 
He I is. think he's oh, gonna no. do it. He, by far. He, so one thing, one thing to note: Rias gave Akano a day. She gave it to her. This meaning that if it's up to Rias, that it could just be a girl a day, just, just a girl a day. He's gonna get the harem ending though. He's not gonna choose. If yeah. if he does make a choice, I will be pleasantly surprised, but somewhat. It. It doesn't fit him, though. He has to do it, the hair mending, and not the hair mending is in nothing happens and no one gets chosen. It has to be the hair mending where he just bangs all of them in an orgy. Like, that's what has to happen with him for this <laughs> day in right? It's time! No, I just, what? I want, <laughs> We're already I living want, together. I want his ultimate form to just be like, Alright, I just had sex, ultimate form, let's do this shit! <laughs> I would not be surprised if that's a plot point in this at some point. It, it probably like, shit's will going be. wrong, and, like, Rius, like, just fucks him, and he's just like, yeah, he just gets super powerful and turns into the full dragon and just fucks shit up. <laughs> oh my god. The show has an interesting way to do character development. I'll give it that. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's Bro, so good. I just love it because Every... it, it doesn't pretend to be something nope. it's not. It's fucking great. Just, I, I, I knew it too. That's the best part. In episode 3, when he was just like, I figured it out. I was like, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. And then he started going into like his whole like, Rius, I need you. All right, I'll do anything you want. All right, let me poke your nipples. <laughs> it was just so good. <laughs> I love how Dan Anyways. keeps shaving, shaking his head like, what the fuck? Oh, come on, Dan, you said worse things. No, actually, all I'm thinking is, shit, we're hitting 107 in the time, and we're still at this, but whatever. It's a really good <laughs> yeah, series, not... Dan, have you watched it? Not the new season. You need to watch it! <laughs> okay. I mean, just tell, you can tell by Clecker's excitement how good it is. Mm, He's yeah. never this excited for perverted things. <laughs> I... No, he used to pretend. He used to. He used to pretend not to be. Okay, I'm not excited for perverted things. High school DxD is an exception, all right? You just it's a legitimately yourself. good show. It's fucking hilarious. I I, I agree with Clicker. Like it's it's just funny as hell and great. I won't deny it's that. It's so okay. hilarious. It's so hilarious. I won't either. Anyways, so we should actually get on to the random topic of the night. Yeah, probably. So, um, yeah, we're just talking about, I guess it's just a open discussion about anime censorship and... And, best part about High School DxD, there's an uncensored version. Have you seen the censored version? It's kind of funny. They they draw, like, a little D, it and it floats over, like, their it's nipples. It's great. I love it. I've actually oh, yeah, never right. seen the censored version. <laughs> yeah, it just, it just takes, like, part of the logo for the show and just puts that over the nipples and everything, and it's fucking hilarious. You should watch at least one episode like that. It's great. Uh, that's funny. So, I mean, I, I have to start by saying that I, I in no way actually believe in censorship by any means. And then there's a lot of times that they, they do with shows, is like, they'll purposely censor it just so they can sell Blu-rays. So they're just like, oh, you have to watch it censored, now buy the Blu-ray and get the uncensored kind of stuff. See, the Monogatari series does that. Like well, the, uh... I was going to say, it's, it kind of changes the audience a little bit, too, because I, I, I don't know exactly how, like... Uh, TV show ratings go, but as far as, you know, games, DS, ES, RB rates everything, and a lot of times games will try to get uh, a more broad rating just so that they can sell the games to more people. Uh, but So, uh, I don't know, like, maybe they could look for, for something like that in, in TV shows right. as well, making it apply to more broad, a more broader Well, audience. I mean, there's a difference between, right. like, actually changing the material so that it's censored, and then just doing it the way it was, and then just, like, slapping, like, fog or light effects over it just or to, the logo yeah or the okay. logo just to cover it up <laughs> like um I, I at least appreciate the effort they go through sometimes where if it's something it needs to be censored if they do something more creative with it like uh the, the fog is one example that just fits well typically if it's part of the scene and everything i can see that it's like okay cool you know whatever i mean it's obvious that they should be showing more and everything and they probably will in the blu-ray and all that but as long as they do it like that, or they do it in a fucking hilarious way, either one of those, I'm okay with it. Because I've seen, uh, like, a lot of them where it'll actually have the censorship, it'll be, like, just a super, like, crazy expression, like, chibi face of one of the characters over the nipples or something. And, like, stuff like that, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it, because it's hilarious. It's great. So, um, I don't know. I, I definitely understand the, the need for it, for it to be able to actually get to broader audiences, but it really should be... I don't know, I've, I've always felt where it's more... 
something that shouldn't be necessary if you just straight up say what the target audience is for it and just make it where only that target audience can see it then i mean yeah it does it does cut down on who can see it at that point but it keeps the um essentially the the artist's vision there better right yeah no i totally agree that's what i think they should do yeah and that's, i was just saying that that's why that's why they probably don't go ahead yeah, and this is kind of to go with Dan's note earlier. That's why the kind of like with the ESRB rating that we have and movie ratings in general, if you make a movie rating R, you could do whatever the fuck you want. No, and, like, you can't. Not anything. Oh no, Jackass was pretty, uh, pretty, uh, they, they explored all options. They, they didn't have full on intercourse, though. Yeah, you still can't do that. Like graphic intercourse. In a world, I'm not even gonna go into it. Um. Oh, what? <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. What was that? Yeah. In a world, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that train of thought will be buried. Um. So, uh, yeah. So, how I kind of feel about censorship is, I kind of agree that most of it should be done via ratings and if you have a clear rating and a clear audience then you should just target that audience i think it's hilarious when some things try to uh censor it but censor it in a really hilarious way like cj's pointed out i hate when series set do a terrible they censor it but do a shitty job of censoring I'm going to point out one of my favorite series because my favorite series actually had a dubbed censored version that f- the legendary four kids did, and it was One Piece. So in One Piece, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but there's a character named Sanji who is the cook, and he always is smoking a cigarette. That's what he does. Oh, they, cha- they changed it to a lollipop they or something? They changed it to a lollipop. That wasn't even the worst part. The worst part is they still kept the whole, like, breathing in and out animations for a lollipop. <laughs> well, that's a little more difficult to change. I mean, yes. you, do have, you do have to give them credit that, like, they they were able to redo an entire show just by, like, changing little right. pieces of everything, you know? 600 episodes. No, no, they didn't get that far. I get... No, they never got okay. that Yeah, they, far. they went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> One one thing I'll say, like um, that, uh, is the reason why that's kind of shitty. There's a difference, or there should be a difference between censoring something for an audience and changing the content of the show. Because if it has all the content there, it just makes it, you know, whatever. You can't really see it or something because you don't want somebody to see that. That's fine. But if you dr- just straight up change something, especially if it changes a character or a plot point, like what you're talking about, that's like a part of his character and everything, whether you want to believe it is or not. And changing something like that can actually have a pretty adverse effect to it yeah that's not even the worst part they actually cut out an entire story point that was really important they just cut it out right i was gonna say i feel like what what not to say it, it justifies anything because it, it doesn't but what usually takes them to censor things when they're distributing them in america is they feel like there's a big cultural difference be- between what's acceptable to a younger audience in japan and what's acceptable to a younger audience in here at least in the vision of the people who are distributing it here. So, go, CJ's laughing. I wonder what. I, I, I just thought of something. I forgot what show this was. I've seen this. Oh, somebody showed me this. Where they even do it sometimes for just cultural differences. Where people would fucking right. understand. Where it's like, I think one of them, they have uh, fucking rice balls. And they change it to something else, like fucking burgers or something like that. Actually, it's something <laughs> weird. Oh In God. Pokemon, they call them donuts. That's awful. They're like, you donuts. want some donuts? Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it was. It was just something like stupid like that. It's like it's a fucking rice ball. Like it's it's not that hard of a concept to understand. <laughs> no, that's retarded. But what I was trying, what what I mean is more like the the cigarette thing with with Sanji in One Piece. Maybe in Japan, like people don't really care if kids see cigarette on television, but maybe American moms would be like, "Oh shit, this show is telling my kid to smoke. This is wrong," or whatever. And that's why they censor it in America to avoid those kinds of problems. So I don't. Well, ca- counter argument to that, uh, Dan. So I'm gonna have to spoil a little thing from the next JoJo arc, but there, there's actually smoking in. The main Jojo, Jotaro, he's actually underage, and whenever he smokes, they literally just draw black over it. But what's kind of stupid is that it's only black when it's in his mouth. You can still see the smoke 
And whenever <laughs> and whenever he takes it out, they stop censoring the cigarette in his fingers. It's so clear that he lights up a cigarette and he, and he's smoking it. Like how are you hey, gonna? They're not. They're technically not showing that he's smoking. <laughs> but it's so dumb. There's yeah, so much context clues. <laughs> yeah, it, it is stupid. Yeah, I'll agree. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, this almost makes me think of certain like hentai manga and yeah. stuff, <laughs> where they'll just like put this one very very thin like black line on certain pl- places. Yeah, that doesn't but... make any sense either. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? No. <laughs> oh, shut up! You do. Yeah, you do, Clacker. Yeah. I don't though. Well, continue. If you... Okay, I'll find you an example. Hold yeah, on. you do that. Oh God. You do that. No. <laughs> so no. let's talk about unacceptable censorship. So, I tried to watch this one called uh, Terraform Mars, which is about, like, space cockroaches or whatever. But, like, the one draw... Wait, wait, wait. There's an anime about space cockroaches? Yeah. And there's an anime about fucking yeah. everything, Dan. Yeah, and the people what the people the have, like, bug power so that they can fight them. It, it's a whole thing I won't get oh into. But the, the one of the hooks of the story, of the manga, was that it's, it's very graphic and violent. So, like, I picked, yeah. I picked up the anime. I was like, okay, this should be pretty interesting. And then I got to a scene where, like, half my screen was black. Like, three, like two-thirds of it, I'm like, it, was something wrong? And I rewind a little bit, and then it goes back to that scene, and it's just like, what? They literally cover, like, two-thirds of the screen in black. So you only see, like, a little piece of it. Like, how can you do that? That's retarded. Yeah, I was That's actually weird. reading the manga for a while, and it's super graphic. Like, people get, like holes gouged into their sternum and it's like crazy as shit like why are you even making the show at that point if you're gonna cover it up half the time yeah i think the right. same thing has been done with uh i want it's one of the more recent ones i want to say it's like uh tokyo ghoul tokyo ghoul or something like that yeah where they just straight up the but scenes, not they would just ghoul black most the of them shit. out and everything mm-hmm. yep yeah but this was to more of a degree like at least tokyo ghoul will only do like the little part where it's graphic mm. terraformers are literally covered majority of the screen just like a with black and it's it's retarded it's why why even make the show at this point you're kind of just hurting yourselves yeah one thing i do want to say i just remembered though of course i got to bring up my favorite series and uh yeah the Mono guitar series one thing it's great is um that, that kind of goes it plays off of the censorship thing a little bit and it's um it's with the character oshino meme where he always has a cigarette with him, like, at all times, and he's holding it half the time, playing with it, and even has it in right. his mouth a couple times. But, uh, I don't remember if it's in the actual anime currently, or if it's in the, the, the prequel part that hasn't been made yet. But there's, at some point, I think several times, where someone will ask him, like, well, why are you, like, carrying that around, you aren't smoking it or anything? And he's like, oh, then this wouldn't get turned into a manga or anything. Like, he just says that as part of it and everything. As like just breaking <laughs> breaking the fourth wall. I do remember that, that, but that's funny. Where yeah, he's just like, oh, I can't smoke it. It'll, it'll keep it from make being made into an anime and all that and stuff. And it's fucking hilarious. So I, I found that as a a pretty funny fourth wall thing. A little poke at the uh, the censorship there. Right. Yeah. My my mental choices. Remember that had like that scene where he's like, where are all these rays of light coming out of? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that was great. Oh my god. Yeah. I love that, yeah. See, I can get censorship for, for comedic purposes, yeah. you know? That's always great. But, like, when you're just doing it just so, I don't know, you could sell Blu-ray, if it's it, kind of If stupid. it hinders the story in any shape, way, or form, which it did for Terraformers and it's done for s- several other series, then it's not good. Like, it's not what the, it's not what the, it's not what the original author's intent was. Yeah. Like, the original author's intent was, this is going to be bloody, this is going to be gory. And if you go and change that, then it, you're completely ruining what his image was. And it's no longer what he imagined, it's whatever you decided to make. Yeah. So, when that happens, obviously the series is going to suffer because of that. Yeah. I mean, did you guys notice the censorship in JoJo? Like, like when, everyone got, when anyone ever got like something like decapitated or... Like, they lost an arm or something. They always did, like, a black tint over the, the laceration. Hmm. And even in the beginning, they cut out a, a big scene. They cut out, a like, an Aztec ritual where, like, this girl is being sacrificed on an altar. And, you know, like, the guy, like, rips her heart out and whatever. Hmm. That, that's, what, that's supposed to, like, give you a little bit more insight on the people who created the stone mask and whatnot. But they completely cut that out. Hmm. Like, for the most part, I don't really notice if what I'm watching is censored or not. Like, CJ was talking about Tokyo Ghoul before. I watched the first season of Tokyo Ghoul, and I, 
I didn't know at all that it was censored. I just thought that that's how the animal was. Uh, and then Roberto mentioned it before, after, and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But yeah, like, because I remember back in the day when I watched Dragon Ball Z on Cartoon Network, I, I, I used to see a lot of uh, things on the internet about how they were censoring the show for distribution in the Americas, like how there were scenes where Goku would show up naked that they would cut out or like characters that were smoking that they would cut out and that kind of stuff. But, again, like I'm also against it. I, I'm just saying that like for them to do that, I feel like there are probably more reasons behind it than what, what we can see. Like, of course, like selling more Blu-rays makes sense. But I also feel like there, there, may, there may have been points in history where they brought a show and didn't censor it and they got in trouble yeah. because of that, you know? Just be- or because of the whole, like, there's a cigarette in my child's cartoon, I'm gonna sue them, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it, it kind of goes like. off of it. It needs to be its own, like, on a per-show basis as to, like, what they do, if it's really right. warranted or not. Like, High School DxD. I completely understand them taking the logo, just putting that over people's nipples and, like, everything like that. If they're gonna show it on public TV... I completely understand that. It makes sense. Yeah. And but in that case you probably shouldn't show that in public TV yeah. to begin with, right? Which would be the counterpoint. But I mean, they show a lot of other risque yeah. scenes that kind of still show up and they don't do anything about it. So it's really just so nitpicky about we can show this but we can't show that, you know. Well, we're the same I mean, hell, way. all the girls are underage too. I know, we are. Just a different Yeah, we we have different degrees. things that we're nitpicky about. I mean, obviously, us yeah. four aren't, but, you know, as, as a society, like, America is very different on their censorship to other people. Yeah. Right. Although, one interesting thing, they never do any, there's never really any language, like, censorship, you know? Unless other for comedic purposes. Oh, I, I have actually heard some. That's one reason why I typically don't do dubs half the time, because I've heard some dubs that just straight up change the language and everything sometimes, like, take out bad stuff. And, uh, like, I've actually went back and watched, um watch the sub as well and they just like had it where it was censored where they just uh like put the stars for the word or whatever but you could still like know that it was there was a very different thing they said as opposed to what was in the dub right well sometimes like fan translations will purposely make something more effective by adding like fuck or shit or whatever to the scene no in instances where this has happened i straight up like i've actually gotten to the point where i can pick out certain japanese cuss words and everything now because i've heard them so many fucking times oh, okay and it's just like, oh, yeah, that was in there. <laughs> that had a lot more effect than last time I watched it. Uh, I won't deny that, but sometimes, like, they'll take an inflection of something to a higher degree, mm. which is fine, honestly. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Um, so, yeah, I don't really have anything else here. I that, that was a fun little discussion there, I guess. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? Yep. Uh, just, nope. I wish it didn't happen as much. <laughs> Censorship. Yeah. Like, I haven't been able to finish Terraformers because I want to watch the the uncensored version. Yeah. Just, just, just watch um, um, or just read the manga. Yeah, yeah. it's better. I did think <laughs> it's the artist's true vision, Roberto. I know. I did think it's something that probably would have made uh Kogius a lot better though, if they just censored Lelouch out completely. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> shut up. He's just one big mosaic. <laughs> Let's just end this episode. Oh, I'm starting to yeah. pick it down. It's starting to get a little bit bad, huh? He just talks in like that robot yeah. voice that they use for people <laughs> who don't want to be identified. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Oh, shut up. Just just finish the episode. <laughs> Calm down, man. <laughs> Jesus. Ouch, Dan. Ouch. No, I'm concerned that like this shit is like going to hit an hour and a half oh, again. Yeah, that's our that's our cutoff like, is an hour and a half. We actually started Amy for an hour, but it eventually just kept like growing and growing until we started saying one hour and a half. But that's fine. All right. Just <laughs> cut out stuff you feel that'll make it shorter there. Yeah. No, that requires okay. more editing going. for him now. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and wrap it up so we don't piss off Dan anymore. But um, okay. Hold on, I gotta get my script thing back up. Oh, so um, so what are we watching? You next don't week? have your script. Well, I I had it fucking the the characters for Code Geass up over that. So um, anyway, let's uh let's do what we're gonna be talking about next week. Which next week we're going into Rumbling Hearts. Which how many episodes is that, Roberto? Fourteen. Fourteen. It's a little bit of a little bit of an odd number, but okay. Well, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a oh. one or two week thing with that. But yeah, we're going to be talking about 1 through 14 there for that then, as well as Volume 7 of Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. And uh, I think you're going to like that one, CJ. I think it's one that I, I've wanted to watch, I just haven't yet. So, yeah, well, I'll see. I I know Rumbling Hearts is uh, apparently a series that makes you feel a lot. I'm completely yes, okay with that. A lot of the stuff I watch and read make me feel a lot. kind of 
from what I, from what I heard, it's similar to Clonad in the way. Stop spoiling, Clicker. He's, he's totally off. Stop spoiling. So Just to, he's totally off. Okay. Just anyway, yeah. Regardless. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about where we can find everybody at. Um, if you want to go ahead, Roberto. Yep, you can find me pretty much anywhere as RJR2992. All right, Dan Clicker. All right, you can find me pretty much anywhere uh, as Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S, or you can also find me at my Twitter, known as O-Klecker, O-H-K-L-E-K-E-R. And Dan. Just look for me on Twitter at M. All right, then um, you should be able to find the podcast on Twitter at pseudo underscore pod. And it has everything else you should be able to find from there. Um, one thing I do want to say, if you search for it on YouTube, if you find, like, you should be able to find the podcast if you just search for Pseudo Random Podcast or Pseudo Random Entertainment, you should be able to find our channel. But if you find it anywhere else or anything, that's not us. Somebody has stolen it from us because people are being dicks about that right now. So you should just go download the shit out of them. And, um, yeah. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere as Boom Coffee, so if there's no Boom Coffee there, I'm probably not on that, whatever it is, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah, well, um, like I said, we'll be talking about Rumbling Hearts and, uh, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer 7 next week, so hopefully you'll tune in then. Bye. Alright, bye. See you. Bye.